In this video, I'm going to be going over exactly how many instruments I own, as well as how much each one of them costs. But the first thing I want you to do is comment down below and take a guess at how many instruments you think I own. You've seen the title, so you know exactly how much everything costs, but I want you to take a guess at how many instruments I'm about to show you. All of these instruments except for two have been used in the cover, so hopefully that gives you a little hint. Also, I want to make a quick disclaimer that all of these instruments have been a slow accumulation over the course of 20 years or so, so it wasn't like I just woke up and just bought all these instruments. And I don't want this to come off as bragging by any means. Hopefully by the end of the video, you'll actually see I play a lot of very cheap instruments, and I know many people that play one instrument that is worth more than all of my instruments combined. With that being said, I am very grateful for everything that I have, and I never take it for granted, so let's jump right into the video, and I guess we'll just start off with saxophones. Okay, so this first saxophone is actually the saxophone that I started on. It's a Giardinelli, I think is how you pronounce it, and it's just their student model. I think it's discontinued now. I can't remember exactly how much I paid for it back then, but I'm pretty sure it was around $350. I played this horn basically from the time I started in around 8th or ninth grade all the way and through college. This horn definitely served its purpose and I would have kept playing it but it ended up needing a repad and that was going to cost more than the horn itself so I decided to start shopping around but I do still use this as my backup horn whenever my main horn is in the shop uh, there are definitely some leaks and some quirks I guess like for example the palm key D is being held shut by a hair tie that was a temporary fix uh, I guess it's a little more permanent now at this point <laughs> so the second alto that I own is the main horn that I play and that is the Jean Paul AS 400 it's just their student model now I won't go super in depth on this one because I've done a whole review of it already so I'll just have that linked in the description but it's definitely a great horn and this is what I play. Also I paid $489.95 for this horn. So the next saxophone is the Jean Paul tenor. This is also their student model. I bought this a little over a year ago and this is the only tenor I own. I've had a few people ask me to do a review of this instrument so I may end up doing that at some point but basically the saxophone sells for $700 and I think it's a really great horn at that price. Okay this last saxophone that I own is actually a little curved soprano. I've used this in a handful of my covers and everyone always comments on it every time I play it because it's so small. It looks and feels like a toy, but it's actually really cool. Now, I actually inherited this from my uncle who inherited it from his grandfather, so my great grandfather technically. I think he used to collect instruments, so this has always been in really good shape. Based on the serial number, it looks like it was built in 1920 and it was kind of hard to find this exact instrument for sale, but I found one listing on eBay for close to $3,000 and I found another listing for around $1,000. So I do have the original case for this. This would probably go for around $1,500 to $2,000 which is funny because it's my most expensive saxophone technically but the least played. I definitely would like to play it more it's just a little clunky because of the ergonomics since it's such an old saxophone and also I really need a better soprano setup so. So this next instrument is flute. This is a Gemeinhardt M3S. I don't really know what that means. This was actually my mom's flute when she was in high school and she never ended up pursuing music professionally so it sat for a while and we ended up getting it repadded when I started playing in high school but based on different eBay listings this could probably go for anywhere between five and seven hundred dollars especially since it was just overhauled and repadded. I think it's a professional model flute and it has an inline G and it's open hold. If you're a flute player, you'll probably know what all that means. I've never had any issues with it and I really like playing flute, so. So next is probably my least favorite instrument out of all of these and that's clarinet. The clarinet I have is wooden, it's a Buffet E11 and I bought it I think my senior year of high school. It's a really nice clarinet, but I just don't like playing clarinet. I practiced it pretty consistently for a couple years and the voicing just never made any sense to me. I mainly just use it as a prop in my TikToks now, which is kind of funny. <laughs> I found my eBay receipt when I bought this because I bought it on eBay and it was I think $674. I actually ended up trying to sell this on Craigslist at one point but no one bought it so here I am. So now we're going to move on to some of the stringed instruments I own and we'll start with my electric guitar. So this was one of the first guitars I ever owned. It's an ESP LTD F50 and it has a Floyd Rose bridge and a locking headstock or something. I don't know how to what it's actually called. But for those of you that don't know I started on guitar I think around 4th or 5th grade and then I ended up picking up saxophone around 8th or ninth grade. I've basically had this guitar since. I ended up starting to play again actually because I started making these covers on YouTube. It definitely gets the job done but it could use some new strings. I don't think I've changed the strings on this in like I don't know seven years or something and one of the pickups is kind of falling in but I don't know I can't really complain. It's definitely gotten the job done. They actually discontinued this exact model but I found a couple comparables on eBay for around 300 to 350 so we'll just put this at the 300 mark. So this next guitar is my acoustic electric guitar and it's a Fender. I'm not really sure what the model is. I guess it's a CD 630 or something. I don't really know much about gear to be honest so <laughs> which is kind of ironic given all the instruments that I own. But anyways, yeah, it's a Fender. I bought this a couple years ago from a little music shop in town, and I think I paid around $270 for it. I probably still have the receipt for that. I keep track of all my stuff, so if I ever get audited... FBI, open up! 
This is actually the second or third acoustic I've ever bought, but it's the only one that I currently own. I used to own a really nice Martin and ended up selling that to buy a clarinet my senior year in high school, which was really a big mistake. That guitar was super nice and I loved playing it, but I just wasn't playing it at the time and I needed a clarinet for school, so it is what it is. But anyways, this is the acoustic. Okay, so next up is my bass. Now, I am not a bass player. I still play bass with a pick. Everyone roasts me for it. And this is a very cheap bass. I think I paid $190 for it at Sweetwater. I bought it a couple years ago. It's actually a Fender Squire mini bass, so it's actually kind of short and small compared to full-size bass. Some people have noticed that because it's like, why does he look so big when he's playing that instrument? But it definitely gets the job done and I can't complain. I've had some people tell me I should put flat wounds on it. It might make it sound better. So I may end up doing that at some point, but I'm not really a bass player. I don't really have any desire to get good at bass. So it just gets the job done when I need it. So this last stringed instrument is probably my favorite and that is banjo. If you follow me on Instagram, you probably see me post videos every now and then. I really enjoy playing banjo and I actually got this one for free from my buddy Trent. He was moving halfway across the country and didn't want to take this with him because he wasn't really playing it much and offered it to me for free. The brand says like Bessler or something and I found one online for like a hundred bucks. So I guess we'll value it at that, but it was given to me for free and I'll probably end up giving it back to him if I ever upgrade. It's definitely a pretty cheap banjo and you can see the action is really high, especially the further you get up the fretboard. So it's pretty much only meant to be played down at the first couple frets. Like I said, I'll probably end up upgrading at some point, but this has been really great to learn on and I can't complain about a free instrument. So now we're going to get on to some of the more miscellaneous and obscure instruments that I have. So this next instrument is called a tin whistle. A lot of people think it's a recorder, but it's actually like a traditional Irish whistle, I guess. Some people call them penny whistles. I don't really know if there's a difference, but this one's a Clark in D and I think I paid like a little over $10 for this when I bought it years ago. I think the only reason why I bought it is there were some upperclassmen that bought a bunch of them and they were like walking around school playing them and I wanted to play too. So it's something like that, but it's yeah, I mainly just use it for SpongeBob memes now. <laughs> So this next one, I don't really know what category it fits in, but it's called a jaw harp. And I've never actually used this in a cover, I don't think. I found the receipt and I paid $8.80 for this years ago. Basically the way you work is you like put it in between your teeth and flick this little piece of metal. And I don't know if you hum or I don't know, you'll hear what it sounds like. So yeah, anyways, a little obscure, but it's an instrument, I guess. So the next one or two, I guess, are train whistles. I think I used this in my Thomas the Tank Engine theme and that might've been it. Actually, I think there's one other Fortnite emote that used it. I can't really remember, but I think I originally had one of these from years ago and then I bought this one or something like that. But either way, they're about $7 each. Now, this is another one that I've definitely never used in any cover and that is the harmonica. Now, I can't really play this. I've never put any time into it. This one's like a chromatic one. So you can push this little button on the side and I think it allows you to go up a half step or something. I think this was my grandfather's years ago, maybe, or something like that. But like I said, I've never really put any time into learning how to play it. These look like they go anywhere from 10 to $240, depending on the condition they're in, so I just put this one at 50 bucks. So I don't know if this next one counts. It's kind of like a kindergarten art project, I guess, and that's a homemade shaker. I've only used this in one video and it's literally just a toilet paper roll filled with like lentils. It's probably less than a dollar. I'm not even gonna count this. I really need to buy like a miscellaneous percussion kit or something. Speaking of percussion, next is a glockenspiel. I've played this in a handful of covers and I think it actually was my sister's years ago. I think she played percussion in high school for like a semester or something. I can't remember. I don't actually have the right mallets for this thing. So these are like soft rubber and you really need like hard plastic I think so when you hit it it's very quiet so actually when you hear me play this in covers I'm actually using the MIDI sound and then I'm just playing the part on the actual instrument it just ends up being too quiet to mic and I don't really want to buy mallets even if they're only 10 bucks it's just not worth it I rarely use this thing I found a couple of these online for around 50 to 100 bucks and this one's kind of in rough shape so we'll just put it at 50 bucks okay lastly is this cajon bongo I think is what it's called basically it's like a bongo but it has like snare wire on the inside like a cajon some of you might know what those are you like sit on top of them and hit it some of them have bass drum pedals and stuff this was actually my brothers who played drums in high school but I kind of uh, borrowed it from him and never gave it back and I use this pretty often in my covers it's kind of nice as like a light percussion sound I guess my technique is also probably terrible on this but it looks like they go for around $65 now there is an honorable mention and that is the paper towel roll holder and screwdriver combo I've actually used this in a couple different covers as a triangle sound sometimes the MIDI triangle in GarageBand you can't get it to mute the way I want it to so this was just a little creative solution I came up with I'll probably buy a triangle at some point but they're so expensive like you would think they'd be really cheap they're actually pretty 
expensive. So this is the cheap alternative. Now I was debating whether or not to include my mouthpieces and I decided I would just quickly go over some of them so you can get an idea of the mouthpieces that I own and how much they cost. I will say I don't own that many mouthpieces compared to a lot of saxophone players I know. And also my mouthpieces are very cheap compared to a lot of saxophone players. So the mouthpiece I play on right now is my custom Sios mouthpiece. That one's $225. Then I also have a Meyer 5, which is around 150, a Diodario Select Jazz, and that one's 160. And then a Selmer C Star, which is 156. And that's like a classical mouthpiece. I don't really play that anymore. I actually mainly only play my Sios mouthpiece, but I still have these and there's no point in getting rid of them. It's nice to have some backups. Then on tenor, I play a Diodario, which is $208. I also have an old Meyer 6 tenor mouthpiece, which is 170. On soprano, I have a Meyer 7, which is 130. I also have the original Buescher mouthpiece that came with that horn and I saw that sell for around 50 bucks and I also have like a Rico hard rubber mouthpiece that's $20. On clarinet I have a B45 mouthpiece which is $98 as well as a Van Doren 5RV which is around $100. I also have some of the miscellaneous mouthpieces that came with all the instruments but those aren't really valued at much and most of the time people just pitch those. So I think that ends up being around 17 or 18 instruments depending on how you count it. I guess either of those answers count so let me know how close you guys got. But now here's the moment you've all been waiting for. Here is the ending lick from Spongebob played on every instrument that I own. So the total of all of this without the mouthpieces is $5,866.31. The total price of all the mouthpieces together is about $1,467. So that brings the total of everything, including mouthpieces, to $7,333.31. So there you go. That's a rundown of all the instruments I own and exactly how much they cost. Like I said, I don't want this video to come off as bragging by any means, and all of these instruments have been accumulated over the course of 20 years. The only professional model instrument I have is that flute. I think it's a professional model. It might even be intermediate. I know the clarinet's intermediate and everything else is definitely on the low end. I've just found I've had more use for a wide variety of instruments than one really high quality main instrument. I'm sure over time I'll upgrade everything and one day maybe I'll have like a six figure instrument collection so I'll do an updated video then but that probably won't be for a long time. So anyways thanks so much for watching let me know if you like this type of video I've also been thinking about doing like a breakdown of like the finances of a gig because I get a lot of people commenting on my gig vlogs asking for exactly how much I make and it just changes so much per gig so let me know if that's something you want to see and thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Oh dude, I'm already pro at this. Isn't this what you guys do whenever you're standing around? <laughs> yeah, I like that.